people like to say media needs to be less biased. Well, yes and no, right? Media is very biased because people are biased. At the end of the day, media is just made up of people. Everyone has their biases. It's better if you recognize and understand your biases. Yeah. Like, yeah, and there's one here that I think throws people for a loop, but uh, but I am of the the strongly held and well considered point of view that so called objectivity is a bias. Yes, and and you know media. So traditional journalism was done in an environment that was dominated by white people on a handful of networks that were controlled by rich people. Some of this has changed, some of it hasn't, and so what passed for objectivity was a kind of both sides approach. Like, well, let's hear equally from this side and equally from that side, and then we're neutral and we will sort of rise above the fray. I do believe that a journalistic code of ethics that has a reporter you know, committed to the truth has a place. Um, although, you know, as a practice, that's somewhat on, in the decline. It still holds as like an ideal, but I don't think a lot of people have the budget to do that because fact-finding costs money. I love what Roy Woods Jr. said just recently at the White House Correspondents Association dinner, where he's like, say what you will about a conspiracy theory, at least it's affordable. <laughs> right? That's <laughs> such a great point. That's, that's because pretty good. That's pretty good. finding facts costs a news organization a lot of money. There's a lot of yeah, people so does, who have so to be lying. Paid. Look at Fox lying News. Lying is free. Look, look at the, yeah, look at the well, My okay, Pillow guy. It costs $5 million, million dollars. for his lies, right? $900 million is a lot of money. That's an expensive oh, You know bar. half it's going to pass off to the taxpayer, but hey. Uh, the insurance company. But anyway, so Anyway, the, my point here is that that form of obje objectivity yeah. was always only an ideal, an idealized version of things. And it, it foreclosed the questions like, well, wait a minute, what, what stories and angles don't even get considered as options for coverage? Right. right? So maybe you're going to try to tell this story fairly and accurately. Good. Fairness and accuracy are important. Accuracy probably more than fairness, to be perfectly honest. But in any case, what about all the things that don't get considered? What about the, you know, the layers that, that a story has to get filtered past before it's even going to make it to the news? I mean, think about all the things that were going down that were really important and were not newsworthy in the eyes of the newsmakers. And then you'll see what I mean. So... No, I know exactly what you mean. They they show. I don't think that objectivity should be put on a on a pedestal. I think that's a mistake. That locks us into you know the same thing has happened in science mm -hmm. over the years, and then there have been you know philosophers who have brought this into question. But the basic idea that you know we can only ever have partial knowledge. Our knowledge is always positioned right. in a field of power relations, and and we need to understand that we can't claim that somehow we can remove. We're human. It was to your point, Will. We're, we're people. And people have blind spots. You know, the scientists who have rigorously identified and cataloged all of these cognitive biases still have them. Right? Just knowing about it doesn't make it go away. So, so do, you, do you think we should bring back the fairness doctrine for media? No. You don't? No, but I do think that we should. Well, because for, for one thing, so for years— uh, and I don't want to dwell on this. And if people well, don't know, explain what the Fairness Doctrine was. The Fairness Doctrine was official policy of the Federal Communications Commission that you had to give equal time in broadcasting to members of both political parties. So it's very much mapped onto a system in which there's two official points of view. And you should, and the way to, quote unquote, be neutral is to just simply give them equal amounts of airtime. So, no, I think that's a, a two course. Um, and flat-footed of a doctrine. At the same time, I don't think that actually having, you know, most of what we do now is not even covered by the Federal Communications Commission because it's not broadcast on, on airwaves owned by the government or licensed from the government. So it's on the internet. Yeah. So, but, but, but more important than the fairness doctrine ought to be the, like, revealing our biases doctrine. In other words, every one of us ought to be examining to a certain, you know, to whatever degree necessary. So that if someone were to ask like, well, what's your, you know, but what's your bias? They could actually answer the question without embarrassment because we all have them, but we're trying to pretend we don't. So that's the problem. So, and, and, you know, for years, what's happening is uh, the convergence of the old fashioned media that was still holding to accuracy and truth and whatever. And, 
new forms of performance on cable initially and then on, you know, well, and the airwaves, because a lot of this stuff started in the 90s with Rush Limbaugh and his cronies. So a, a lot of this stuff then had the exact same appearance as the sort of older quote unquote objective uh, way of doing things, right? So it had the same sound, the same look, the same chirons at the bottom of the screen, the same little ticker, the same you know thing with the breaking news. And now we just have a mishmash where opinions and reporting and you know the circus are all sharing the same platform and look exactly the same way. And I don't think you know. I think what we have in this country fundamentally. Um, if I was going to get on my little soapbox here is, you know, we have people whose business models rely on the rest of us being ignorant to the ways we're being played. I think fundamentally that's what it comes down to. So those business models are more effective when they can make us emotional, right? Uh, Anger and fear and outrage are good for business. And I don't care which end of the political spectrum I'm talking, it's all of them, right? Keep people scared, keep them angry, keep them afraid, and you will keep them watching. You will keep them subscribing. You will keep them donating, you know, et cetera. So the problem is we have a, you know, a government by the people for the people, but the people are the last ones to know what's really going on and, and have the, the weakest set of resources provided to them to become educated citizens, right? So, and that works for the elite's of all kinds, who prefer that the rest of us are like angry and dumb because it fits yeah, I was, their, I was say, like, suits last, their purposes. We're so. the last person to know, but do we know? You know, do we know? Do we know the truth? Are they telling us the truth? Like, it's so it's so hard to trust. Well, whoever it's, they is, I guarantee you they are never telling us the, the right. truth. They're not telling because the truth, but at some level, they aren't trust. telling themselves the truth either. Mm. You know, d- d- mm. there's this wonderful book written mm. years and years ago about a totally different thing. Um, but it asked this profound question. Did the Greeks believe their myths? Right? And I won't get into the details of it and everything else. But <laughs> That's the, a great you know, question. It's we a we great sort question. of take it for granted. They're like, well, yeah. of course. You know, there was Zeus and there was a thing. Yeah. Like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. Did the Greeks believe their myths? Right? Like, literally. Or they, right. they, take, they, take, they take messages and meanings away from it. It's like, you know, you could, say, you could say the same thing today with the Bible. People actually literally believe the Bible, whereas... Well, a lot of people would be like, okay, no, there's teachings you can take from the Bible and take it literally. So did people Correct. believe the Bible, the Torah, the, the Quran, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Any, every can, other I, I sacred Christianity text. Because it's a simple one, but you can insert any religion here. So, you know, in reality, I think people always are much more nuanced and complicated than we give them credit for. And, and the, the increasingly, well, I don't want to sound super nerdy, but like, it's almost monochromatic. You know, it's like, look, the human piano, like a real piano, has, you know, 88 keys of emotional range. I almost said rage. Maybe that's better. We've got 88 keys, right? We've got, we've got, we've got a wide range of expression. And increasingly, it's, we're being dominated by, like, the middle four keys, you know, and every song being written, not literally, I'm not talking about music. This is a metaphor, friends. Every song... Every every political message, every you know, every, it's just banging away on the same four keys, and it's it's gotten stupid and annoying in its um, overly simplistic view. I think people are capable of much more than that, but they're not being fed it. And folks are busy. Life ain't easy. People got rent to pay, medicine to buy, you know, k- kids to raise. That alone, I don't want to get on that, uh, you know, uh, diversion here. But like that, <laughs> I did not know how hard it was going to be to be a parent. Uh, partly because I think I thought I was going to be better at it. Just I just assumed that well, I'm a pretty chill guy. I've been a lot of places. I've seen a lot of stuff. This is going to be fine. It's not fine. It's really hard. And it's even harder for people who don't have some of the social safety nets or family safety nets that have helped us when we've gone through some really rough spots. Oh, or just even the ability of somebody else in the family with a job to pick up a little bit of slack when, as has happened, we find out all of a sudden that, you know, the landlord needs the house back and we got to move, right? And like for people who don't have the ability for someone else in the family to be like, here, I'll spot you. You'll be okay. I know this right. will work out and, you know, help you through the ruts. You know, there but for the grace of God go I kind of a thing. And I, and I try to be aware of that as much as I can. Like it's – it, the studies are shocking. I didn't, didn't look them up in advance, but I, I've heard them relatively recently. The fact that most people in this country are like – 
three days away from homelessness at some sort of economic it's level. It's a high majority of Americans can't afford a $400 emergency. There you go. They have an average of like $500 in savings, which, yes. you know, I consider myself very lucky and I work very hard. So I, I earn it as well that I am not in that camp. Um, but I easily could be within a few months. And that's, any of us and that's could. terrifying. Any of us could. And any of us we, could. Uh, Correct. And not any of us, but like the majority. The, high, the, the 95% majority. of yeah. us could. Yeah. I mean, there's three people who own more than 50% of the world. That's just a fact. It's, it's crazy. crazy. This rock um, spinning through space in the middle of nowhere, and there's like three guys. And there's three guys, <laughs> right? And they're all and they're all in America, which is crazy. 